today is Vlogmas, day 24. We're almost there, we're almost done. Yay us. Which means that I will have to actually figure out a vlogging schedule once I'm done with the thing. And I have caught the plague, so welcome to the plague rat. The skill rat and the skill crow are very excited, so is the zombie bunny. Soon, soon there shall be squid carcass. But happy Christmas Eve to those of you that celebrate Christmas. For those of you like me who do not, I hope that your 24th was super chill and pleasant. But just because I don't celebrate Christmas doesn't mean I don't enjoy Christmas movies because I am a giant nerd. I am. So here are... It's not... It's not even 10. It's like 11 and some honorable mentions. Okay, never mind. Here in no particular order are the holiday adjacent movies that I have a mighty need for at this time of year. Stingiest Man in Town. It's a Rankin Bass adaptation of a Broadway musical, so it's that very specific animation style. It's animated versus claymation. But it's lovely and adorable, and it's narrated by a humbug, so really, what could be better than that? And has two of my, my favorite, like, two of my favorite, like, holiday songs that aren't, like, traditional hymns. In it. Yes, there is a Santa Claus, which is less about an actual physical Santa Claus and more of, a, as the song says, a spirit of generosity. And uh, the birthday party of the king, just because it, it's, it, it's very sweet and strange. The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. You cannot find a more pagan holiday movie than this. I talked about briefly before in one of my, my Vlogmas Vastmas vlogs. Vlogmas fast was, that's hard to say. It is also Rankin Bass. As it is an adaptation of a Frank L. Baum book. Yes, the guy who wrote The Wizard of Oz and is super peculiar and super amazing. And if you watch it on Amazon Prime right now, they have like chunks of it that aren't in the usual edit you see. Like Nasil has this entire song that you only get like the last little bit of. Uh, like literally I have spent years hunting it down on like YouTube and stuff just so I could see the entire song. Cause I, it's like, there must be more to this song. And yes, there is. And on the Amazon Prime one, you can watch it. it it's darling, it's wonderful. It's super surreal and is really more about, cause you know, moral of the story. It's about how small acts of kindness can change the world. Santa Claus the movie, quintessentially 80s bizarreness, has Dudley Moore as an elf in it, and um, John Lithgow as an evil, evil corporate CEO. I mean, this thing is super weird, and it's it's just kind of sweet and weird and cute, and it, it's almost like you're taking drugs. It really is. It has this whole origin of Santa Claus in it that comes down to him become him and his wife becoming these patron saints of children because they had no children of their own so they made the world's children theirs it's really sweet a christmas carol but the one that stars alistair sim it it, it it's weird because it's it's generally agreed to be like the best version of a christmas carol yet it's one of the hardest ones to find though you can find it on youtube should you have a mighty need it's hard to explain but alistair sim brings brings this melancholy to scrooge that is really interesting and really makes you start considering that maybe scrooge's problem wasn't that he was a miser but that he was afraid of what being poor in Victorian England was like. Because remember, this is this is Charles Dickens. This is the man who wrote Little Dorrit, which is an entire huge flippin' novel about basically debtor's prison, which were like cities in Victorian England, and this girl named Dorrit, who was born in one. Like, forget about being born into poverty. Let's be born into a little literal debtor's prison. It's like you put those two things side by side and it's like, yeah, I wonder why Scrooge was having a thing. Doesn't change the fact that he was still a total jerk, but you know, it gives it some context. 
Smoky Mountain Christmas that stars Dolly Parton, which uh, this is a fairy tale for Christmas. It, it has a wicked witch in the entire thing, and basically Dolly Parton plays a singer who decides to get away from everything and go hide out in her in her friend's cabin in the Smoky Mountains and ends up adopting like six kids with this guy who lives out in the middle of freaking nowhere and it's it is a wild ride from beginning to end and again it's really hard to find but you can find it on YouTube if you look. The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, the the animated one that's narrated by Boris Karloff. Cause come on, it's narrated by Boris, Boris Karloff. The, 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 they're, they're, the, I, I, I need no excuse for this. It is a, a, it is a perfect encapsulated thing. The holiday, which is a weird thing for me to, to, to go, yes, yeah, a thing because I don't like romantic comedies, but there's something about this one that I really enjoy. There, there's a lot of strangely profound wisdom in it that is, important that, that is not necessarily holiday based. All I Want for Christmas, which has a baby Ethan em Embry and an even more baby Thor, Thor Birch. And it's like a parent trap, but at Christmas, but without twins and mice and Leslie Nielsen as Santa Claus. Continuing the, 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 the evidently everything I like is slightly psychedelic. Scourge the Musical with Albert Finney and and Al Guinness as Marley. Al Guinness, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi in the original Star Wars movie. It, it's, it has this entire, you, you know how theater productions will have this, a cast of thousands moment, and it's just a big production number. They have one in Scrooge that is literally supposed to be the entirety of London singing this thank you very much song and you have Albert Finney's Scrooge you know with Ghost of Christmas Future and all of his his long-fingered cloaked glory singing along with this thing that is basically a song celebrating his death the people hate Scrooge so much the entire city is celebrating his death that is a high key bizarre. It was also one of my mom's favorite weird Scrooge movies. The Rankin Bass Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer with uh, the claymation things. Also, it's like a lot of them are like needle felted, I realized this year. But yeah, Island of Misfit Toys, and I am not just a misfit, and yes, and, and the, 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 let's throw down the, the capitalism of Santa Claus kind of thing, except no. I, I have thoughts about this movie. Especially, you know, why does, why, why does Hermie not have the same kind of ears as the rest of the elves? I have theories. Theories. Okay, anything the Nutcracker, but specifically the Nutcracker Prince, which was an animated adaptation of the story. Not Rankin Bass. You can also find this on YouTube if you look. But it's just a, it's a really nice adaptation of the of the Nutcracker story, and it's sweet, and it's sweet, and it's sad, and yeah, there's some interesting twists going on in it, and. Drosselmeyer in it is fantastic as is the clock. Strangely enough, in my family, um, when I was little, because we, we were very poor a lot of my, my childhood, but at one point we were not. And at one point, it was the tradition that my mom would take me to see A Christmas Carol. I have very distinct memories of this. And my dad would take me to see The Nutcracker. And I have no memories of whether or not my brother was with us or not. I mean, my brother is quite a bit older than me, so he might have been doing other things. Or it could be that while my dad had me at the Nutcracker, my mom had him at a Christmas Carol. They could have been doing, like, quality time with the kids. I don't know, but I remember going to see these things with my parents in that particular order and just everybody being so weirded out growing up that my dad was the one who took me to the Nutcracker. It's like... Folks, my dad is the one who introduced me to opera. He is why I love opera. I, he might be why I love ballet. I, I'm not sure who was the one who introduced the ballet into my life. It, it might have been a co concentrated effort. Also, if you have the chance and your movie theater does this, there are, sometimes they're simulcasts, sometimes they're like delayed broadcasts. 
but they will do the Bolshoi per performing the Nutcracker, and it's excellent. I mean, seriously, it's the Bolshoi. Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, which really should be Alice Otter's Jug Band Christmas, but it doesn't do. It's a Muppet adaptation of a children's book, and it's, it's super cute. I mean, obviously, it's Muppets, but it's, you know, just... It's the, the being super incredibly poor at Christmas and still trying to do things for other people. And sometimes the rest of the world helps you out just a little bit. Just enough for, for you to help yourself. And, you know, add a double bonus, any Christmas episode of Leverage. Just any one of them. They are all excellent. I mean, there's only like two of them, I think. But <laughs> There's only like two of them, I think. But Parker's sustained wonder and love of Christmas from this character who, who's had this horrifically abusive life and neglected life and stuff and teaching other people in her fan, found family how important these things are. And Will Wheaton as a bad guy is always good too. Okay, so there we go. I have done something very typical of Vlogmasy. Yay me. This will never happen again. I, I, I'm not this, uh, I'm not this quality of a YouTuber. I will see you all tomorrow for the last day of Vlogmas. Oh my god. That this was a thing. That this is like doing Inktober or NaNoWriMo. What was I thinking? So do good, be kind, be brave, courage. <laughs>